to answer what you want to hear about UCAN and, and triathlon training and triathlon nutrition. So um, we will make sure that we address every question and uh, hopefully I won't be the only voice you hear throughout the session. Like I mentioned, uh, our registered dietitian, Seth Bronheim, just working to hey, get him online. There he is. All right, Seth, how are you doing tonight? Great. I'm connecting through my phone, so uh, you know, a little technical difficulties. All right. Well, very good. We got Seth here. And um, so a lot of you folks are, are coming here um, after joining us for the webcast that we had with Bob Sibahar, Jeff Boer, and, and a host of others. And um, many of you have the opportunity to order your UCAN sample pack. Uh, some of you may have tried it. Some of you haven't tried it yet. So we're really going to approach this um, as though you're pretty new to the product. And, um, you know, we, we did talk a little bit about how UCAN fits into the whole idea of metabolic efficiency. We also kind of uh, I told you um, I was the one that was um, was on screen during that webcast. We told you a little bit about the story of UCAN. So, um, you know, we, we covered some of the basics, but uh, there's plenty more to cover. And, and we're going to try to get through some of the science pretty quickly and then talk about um, some usage. But um, Seth, being the dietitian, um, I want to start with kind of an overall look at, at nutrition and, and really taking a look at some of the typical pre-workout fuels that endurance athletes, um, triathletes, runners gravitate towards. So we're talking about, um, if we just look at it from a food level, not even a, a sports nutrition level, bagels, bananas, cereal, energy bar, granola bars. Um, what is the issue with a lot of the carbohydrates that um, athletes are using to fuel their workouts? Well, the, the first thing is that a lot of these, these carbohydrates and, and really the calories, you know, they, they might sit in the stomach for a little bit, but then once they're digested in your intestines, they're, they're rapidly digested. The, the enzymes in your intestines break them down very quickly, and, and, and all the calories enter your bloodstream quickly. So it might give you energy for a short-term period, but, you know, it's not going to keep you sustained for a longer period of time. So you, and the other big problem is that if you teach your body to fuel with, a high carb intake, you know, you, you flood your body with a, a bagel before a, a run, your body's going to have, you know, a bagel has around 50 grams of carbohydrate. You get that whole bagel almost at once, you know, within the first half an hour, that, that whole bagel is, is, is entering your bloodstream. And then you're, you're left with either relying, then you're relying, left with relying on either, you know, sugar-based sports drink gels to keep your energy up so you prevent it from declining. But the big problem with this, fueling pattern is that when your blood sugar rises, and that's what happens when you eat a lot of calories, especially carbohydrate calories at once, your body during exercise is going, I got all the sugar in my blood. Don't burn fat right now. Burn sugar first. So um, I, so that's really you know an issue because most athletes want to be able to better burn fat because fat's an incredible fuel source that we can get into in a little bit. So, Seth, you introduced this idea of blood sugar, which, um, you know, we're going to touch on a little bit more here in a second. But, you know, w w what's going on e e with uh, both uh, carbohydrate-based foods, but even a lot of the sports nutrition products that, that we're familiar with is, is very similar to, to the situation Seth just described. So, you know, your, your early generation of sports nutrition products, which use simple sugars, um, fructose or sucrose, um, your Gatorades and whatnot, um, same deal was happening. You were getting that rapid hit, hit of calories, blood sugar was going up, you were getting short-term energy, but um, you know, not the most effective way to fuel over the long haul. It, it really um, made you rely on consuming calories over and over and over throughout exercise. Even with the uh, newer products that came out on the market, uh, which um, the carbohydrate source was maltodextrin. Uh, maltodextrin uh, is certainly an improvement over simple sugars. It was originally created because it was a larger molecule than, than your sugars, and it was easier on the stomach. So this is something we'll, we'll continue to talk about. But, but in general, um, large molecules pass through the stomach rapidly, and they're digested in the intestines. Smaller molecules like your sugar sit in the stomach and uh, cause uh, exert pressure on your stomach and cause that GI distress. So with maltodextrin, the idea was let's create a larger molecule, a more complex carbohydrate that'll pass through the stomach quicker and it'll be easier for athletes to, to consume. However, maltodextrin still has this impact on, on blood sugar and still causes a significant rise in blood, rise in blood sugar, which isn't ideal for, for fat burn, isn't ideal for sustained energy and and also has some 
negative implications for long-term health. So Seth, um, when we're talking about this whole concept of blood sugar, um, from an energy standpoint, you know, the, there's a lot of uh, folks who may think, uh, myself included until a few years ago, that, that managing blood sugar is only something that folks with diabetes have to worry about. But why should the general person care about keeping their blood sugar stable? And, and what does it really mean? The whole idea, the whole reason you need to keep your, your, your blood sugar stable is because, you know, everybody's had that time period where they've either gone a couple uh, of hours without a meal and they get irritable, they get anxious, they get cranky, they're hungry, and you don't want to feel that way. And so, and that's also when you're exercising, when your blood sugar drops, you're going to feel, you're, you're much more prone to feel fatigued. You know, the um, managing blood sugar is a way to really prevent the physical, the, the sexual fatigue that occurs in your brain, and that's what you feel when your blood sugar is dropping, but it's also that peripheral fatigue that the blood sugar drops, that, that means that there's not a steady release of energy going into the muscle cell, and so the muscle cells are getting fatigued too. You know, when, at, at rest, you have around five grams of sugar floating through your bloodstream, feeding your brain a little bit, you know, uh, and feeding your muscle cells and, and circulating around. So if, if you have fluctuations in this, you know, that, that's what causes the highs and lows in energy. It's kind of, you, you bring it on to yourself. You know, usually when you start exercising, you start draining you through your, your blood sugar. And that's why you need to have a steady source at a slow rate so you can just keep it maintained. Um, but if you have highs and lows, that's when you really start to feel the, the fluctuations. And it's, it's and, and a lot of times when we've spoken to, you know, you know a lot of the endurance athletes and, and, and myself, when I've fueled with various products that were, you know, malpodextrin and sugar-based, you know, it's, it's very much self-induced to have these highs and lows. You're taking in the sugar, it's spiking you up, you're burning through it, and then you're taking more to, to, to basically keep going. And, and that's really the problem. It's self-induced in a way. So if you look at the visual on the screen, you know, I think um, to kind of put it into to terms that a lot of you may have experienced, that, um, you know, that idea of a blood sugar drop is exactly what's happening um, after that, that gel or that hit of sports drink wears off. You know, it, when, when blood sugar starts to fall, it's when you feel the fatigue, you may feel hungry. And, and, you know, in a lot of cases, that's when you tell yourself, I need to refuel. But doing this over and over and over again, like we like, you know, Seth described, it, it really puts the onus on you to keep refueling frequently, which, um, you know, can, can be taxing on your gut and, and also isn't ideal for burning fat. When, when you have this influx of sugar in your body, the body says, burn sugar, don't burn fat. Um, now, certainly this is Lauren, Lauren, you touched upon a really good point there because, you know, when you look at all, all the research on the, on the cardiovascular and the metabolic adaptations, especially for endurance athletes, is that this goes back to ninth grade biology. Everybody, hopefully on the call, remembers that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And when you become, when you get, when you train for endurance, your mitochondria and your, and your muscle cell, it actually grows larger. And more enzymes get active surrounding it to actually enhance and t your body's levels of fat burning and spare your carbohydrate reserves. So the problem is, is when you take in, you know, gels, bagels, bananas, especially during endurance, you're not allowing your body to actually use the, these metabolic adaptations because you can't use that fat for fuel but your body is having all the adaptations for it. You just can't use it because your blood sugar is so high, because you're taking in too many calories. Now, it's just, um, I was just out to dinner with a woman named uh, Amanda Stevens. She actually, she's an MD, and she's stopped working for a year because she wants to win Kona. So, I mean, I couldn't believe that. But she, so she's, yeah. she takes a sabbatical, trying to win Kona, and she was, she's been taking, she had been taking 400 calories per hour because she had to take in that much calories, she was telling me, to keep her energy up. But she's having severe GI distress. And she's a former um, collegiate swimmer, swam for um, the TCU and, and down in Texas. And she was telling me that after two weeks of weaning herself off and, and implementing UCAN, she's been smoking her swim workouts and just killing it. So it's kind of, um, it was great to hear that she was making that, that transformation herself. So we'll talk about, um, you know, a, a lot of these, uh, you know, the benefits of burning fat uh, in the context of, of utilizing UCAN, um, but we just wanted to cover some general nutrition in terms of the, the impact of highs and lows in blood sugar and, and why you would want to maintain blood sugar. But 
let's move it over to UCAN. Uh, a, a lot of you who were on the uh, the webcast, you, you heard about the story of UCAN and and the story of Jonah, who you see on your screen. And and basically, just to, to briefly review it for anybody that missed it, um, Jonah is the son of one of our founders, and is really the reason that UCAN was created. So Jonah has a very rare blood sugar disease, um, which prevents him from breaking down carbohydrates into blood sugar to give him energy. So the way we all sleep at night, our liver releases glucose into our bloodstream and helps us maintain our energy levels. Now, kids like Jonah, uh, they, they're unable to do that. So in, in the 70s and 80s, they were dying at in infancy. In the 90s, it was found that feeding these kids just regular Argo cornstarch that you find at the grocery store help them maintain their energy levels for two hour periods at a time because cornstarch has a slower breakdown than a lot of other carbohydrates. So it wouldn't overwhelm their liver um, and it wouldn't overwhelm their system. It was able to give them the steady release of energy that they needed. But, you know, certainly wasn't an ideal solution because it was only doing this for two hours at a time. So these kids have to be fed every two hours, day and night um, around the clock, which was, you know, extremely stressful for the families. There's a fascinating documentary on YouTube called Life by the Clock, where it kind of details the dilemma of these parents and, and, you know, the stressful situation where they're setting multiple alarm clocks throughout the house to make sure they don't miss a feeding. So Jonah's family, they were really looking for a better way. And they were looking for um, what they called the world's best carbohydrate. In the context of what they were looking for, the world's best carbohydrate was something that would break down very slowly and maintain blood sugar levels, aka energy levels, for a very long period of time. So basically, they wanted something they could give to Jonah before he slept at night that would keep him steady throughout the night so he could have uninterrupted sleep and they could have uninterrupted sleep. So that was really uh, what led to the discovery of super starch, which is the carbohydrate in UCAN. It's, it's totally unique to our product and it's, um, you know, it's different than any of the other carbohydrate sources out there that, that we previously uh, discussed on the, the last few slides, you know, the maltodextrins and the sugars. So Seth, uh, what exactly is super starch and what makes it so different? So our starting ingredient is non-GMO corn, so it's not genetically modified corn. And then it goes through a, a natural cooking process where over the course of 40 hours, this is a patented process, where over the course of these 40 hours, the carbohydrate elongates and has a more, more complex structure. So, you know, we were talking about earlier when the reason why bananas and bagels and, you know, your gels, the reason why they cause that rapid spike in energy is because the enzymes in your intestines break them down very quickly and the next place for nutrients to go after your intestines is your bloodstream. So with UCAN and super starch, it's getting broken down very slowly but steadily. So it's giving you little bits of energy over time, matching the rate your brain and your muscles need fuel rather than getting digested rapidly and giving you too many calories at once. The, um, this, this super starch is completely natural. There's no enzymes or chemicals used. It's not an engineered carbohydrate. It had to be natural because our first customers were two-year-old babies. And the reason it came about was because the top carbohydrate researchers in the world for Jonah, for, for the disease, they were looking at the best carbohydrate to stabilize blood sugar longest. So they tried barley, tapiocas, rices, wheat, so all different types of starches. But our, our carbohydrate, you can, it, it moves rapidly through the stomach, so it's very easy on the stomach, a really nice side benefit for someone looking for energy before they exercise that's not going to cause that GI distress. But then it releases steadily over time, and it keeps you steady. And that's the biggest point, is that Instead of having that bagel digest all at once, this carbohydrate is getting really slowly over time, really giving you energy at the rate you need it. That's extremely important for endurance. So what's um, interesting to note is that, you know, Seth mentioned that um, really the way you want to think of UCAN is it's, it's not a supplement. It's, it's essentially, it's a, it's a food product. It's got a nutrition facts label. Um, there's a lot of NFL, NBA teams that buy the product and they actually use their food budget, the same budget they buy steaks with um, for the guys rather than their supplement budget. So, um, you know, you really want to think of UCAN um, as your pre-workout uh, primarily, well, you know, as a pre-workout and post-workout snack. And, and for longer endurance events, you certainly can use it during as well. Um, but, you know, to put it into context, Jonah 
uh, you, you all received the packets if you ordered one of the sampler packs. Uh, Jonah consumes the equivalent of, of three packets of UCAN before he sleeps at night, and it helps him maintain his blood sugar levels throughout the night. So, uh, you know, you could overconsume it much like you would overconsume oatmeal in a sense. Uh, you, you may just get tired of it or, um, to some extent, but there's no, there's no danger in the, in the dosing with it. it it's, it's a food. Um, so let's talk about, um, you know, we went from uh, Jonah to, to sports. And, and um, you know, what really happened was um, a lot of top sports dietitians, one of them being uh, Bob Sibahar, who was on the, uh, on the webcast a couple of weeks ago. Um, Bob at the time was the dietitian at the University of Florida and, and you know, also uh, the sports dietitian for the 2008 Olympic triathlon team. Um, Bob was one of the, the folks that, that initially told us, you know, that the idea of maintaining blood sugar levels was exactly what he tried to do as a dietitian with all of his athletes, uh, whether they were endurance athletes or, or played team sports, uh, because that was the optimal way to, to burn fat and the optimal way to keep energy levels stable. Now, um, at the time, the best way he could do that was to feed athletes calories at, at set intervals, you know, whether it's every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes, um, because that was the, with the, sports nutrition products on the market, that was the most effective way to maintain blood sugar. But, you know, he really told us if, if this carbohydrate does what you say it does, it's going to completely change my field. It's going to completely change the way athletes fuel uh, because you have something that's maintaining blood sugar on its own. We don't have to keep refeeding over and over and over with it every 30 minutes, every 40 minutes. Um, so what we really wanted to do before we launched into sports nutrition was test our carbohydrate, test you can against maltodextrin, which is what all the newer sports nutrition products we're using. So um, in this first graph, what you see is the blue line is maltodextrin. Um, so this test was, uh, it was uh, done at the University of Oklahoma on racing team cyclists. It was a double-blinded uh, study. So the people giving the cyclists the carbohydrate didn't know which one they were giving them, and the cyclists didn't know which one they were taking. Um, if you look at the blue line with maltodextrin, you see that blood sugar rises significantly, um, you know, within the first half an hour. And then uh, about the 30 minute mark, you start to get that significant drop, which, um, you know, we all recognize as the crash. And uh, with UCAN, what's really significant is that not only is there no significant spike, but the decline is is very very gradual, so you never feel, um, you know, whether it's the crash or that that idea of bonking uh, that that's common in the endurance world, you don't feel that. And if, if you look at the the x axis, even two hours later, your blood sugar is still roughly around baseline, meaning that you're going to feel that steadiness and energy um, on you know a packet of you can for about 90 minutes to two hours without it really tailing off. That's, that's, you know, typically what people are feeling. Um, so that's, that's extremely, uh, beneficial for, uh, you know, for energizing without having to keep fueling over and over and over again. What was really significant as well, what, what a lot of the experts that, that looked at our research found the most significant is, is this next slide. And, um, Seth, um, I'll let you as the dietitian um, just explain the role of insulin and, and let folks know what they're looking at here and, and why they should care about it. Yeah, so um, the, the, main, the main thing is that when you take in things like, you know, cereals, these other fast-acting carbohydrates like your gels, uh, like an energy bar, power bar, cliff bars, that once these carbohydrates are digested quickly in your intestines and once the energy enters your bloodstream rapidly, you raise your blood sugar levels because all these carbohydrates are breaking down to sugar in your bloodstream. But that sends an emergency signal to your body because you can't keep your blood sugar levels high for a long period because you don't want to have high levels of blood sugar. That's how you can over time get certain disease states and, and certain um, poor cellular uh, adaptations in your body. So insulin is a storage hormone. It comes into your, into your body to say, hey, bring your sugar levels back down. So that's the first thing insulin does. Its goal is to bring your blood sugar levels back down. But insulin has a second function in the body. And its job is to prevent you from burning fat because why should you, know, why should you burn fat when you have all, these, all this available energy and sugar in your bloodstream? So that's, and so the, the thing is, is that when you keep insulin low, you can, your body continue to burn fat. But the beauty of you can, that every gram is absorbed as energy. So unlike certain things that might pass through the body like fibers or um, unabsorbed nutrients, every gram is absorbed to give you steady energy. So you get a slow release of energy, 
but at the same time, your fat cells and your, and your body fat continue to break down to feed fatty acids for your muscle cells to use and burn. So you have to take advantage of that metabolic adaptation of that, those bigger mitochondria, like we're talking about, um, that, that allow your body to better burn fat during endurance. So you get the energy, and you get to burn fat at the same time. And, and that's really uh, the goal of UCAN and, and how it benefits the, the endurance athlete metabolically. So what's been pretty fascinating is, um, you know, as we've been at various expos uh, over the last, uh, you know, couple of years, uh, we've had so many athletes, triathletes, marathoners, tell us that they actually gain weight during training. And it's uh, in a lot of cases, you know, it's because their carbohydrate intake is, is so high just to support the level of training because that's, you know, traditionally how people have thought they need to fuel themselves for endurance exercise. Uh, you know, whether it's this notion of 300 calories an hour for certain triathletes, um, it's all a carbohydrate-based fueling, so it's it's all you're doing is burning carbohydrates. The benefit of burning fat, like fat, like Seth mentioned, is you know not simply just from an energy stand. I mean, not simply from just a body composition standpoint. You know, if you're somebody that's getting into endurance sports as a as a mechanism to lean out and lose weight, uh, you certainly want to burn more fat when you're training. But but fat's an incredibly powerful energy source as well. Uh, you know, a gram of fat gives you nine calories of energy. A gram of carbohydrate gives you four calories of energy. So, you know, we recently were talking to a pro triathlete who who said triathlon's a fat burning game. The more fat you can teach your body to burn, or or the you know, if your nutrition supports fat burn, the better your performance is going to be because you're going to feel better energy. You're not just relying on on carbohydrates. And you know, all of us, even the leanest people, um, Meb Kaflesky, top marathoner in the U.S. for the last decade. Uh, it's been a, a big user of UCAN for the last four or five years. And, and you know, MEB is 3 4% body fat, um, 4% on a bad day, which is kind of funny to think about. But even MEB has fifteen to 20,000 calories of stored fat that he can use for fuel. So it's, it's simply a matter of um, consuming the right source of carbohydrate, the right fuel source that will allow the body to burn fat, which is really what your body wants to burn. So Let's um, we, we, we're starting to get some questions on how exactly to use you can. Uh, I think it's important to understand though the science behind it and and what makes it unique because you know it, it's not simply something where we're switching up the ratios and it's this much protein and this much carb. It's it's literally a new calorie source. It's a completely unique ingredient that um you know that's only found in in our product. So it, it was kind of important to give everybody an understanding of, of, you know, what exactly that ingredient is, what it was created for, and why it's unique when you compare it to other carbohydrate sources. But let's get into how exactly to, to use UCAN. Um, quickly to review the benefits of, of UCAN, you know, there's, there's no spike in crash that you get from your sugars. Um, it just provides you with that steady release of, of energy and that long-lasting energy. The low insulin response that Seth just detailed um, allows the body to burn more fat for fuel, and, and you're really getting uh, two fuel sources. You're burning both carbohydrates and fat, so you know using two fuels is obviously better than one. Um, this point about, uh, go ahead, just Seth. So, just so I can interrupt, you know, um, you know, just to kind of el uh, illustrate this point that you're able to burn more fat. Anybody can check out a uh, Lance Leo's blog. He's an endurance athlete out in St. Louis Park, Minnesota, and you know, to test this, he actually, he treats his body like a laboratory. He's on the treadmill, and he um, ramps himself up the threshold to around 10.9 uh, miles per hour on the treadmill, kind of a five or so minute mile. And um, with UCAN, at that point, at 10.9 miles per hour, he was, he was hooked up to an oxygen mask testing his fat burning levels based on the carbon dioxide and oxygen he was releasing. And he was burning 53% fat as his fuel at 10.9 miles per hour. He then, a week later, did a test, the same exact test, using Hammer Heads, uh, the maltodextrin-based product, the Hammer product. And at that same intensity, 10.9 miles per hour, Lance was only burning 12.7% fat. To really show you how carbs entering the body, you know, re significantly reduce your ability to burn fat, whereas you can't, he's, he's over 50%. So just wanted to mention that, Barnes. Great point, Seth. And then, um, so this idea of, of uh, high molecular weight carbohydrate with a low osmolality, simply what that means is that um, carbohydrates that there are larger molecules pass through the stomach very rapidly. So that's why, you know, for a lot of you folks who have tried UCAN already, um, you know, you may notice that the consistency is a little bit thicker, but, but despite that, 
it doesn't sit heavy in the stomach at all. So, you know, five to 10 minutes after you drink it, it, it gets in and out of the stomach very quickly, very gentle on the stomach. So that's been a big benefit, um, you know, for, for especially for long course um, endurance athletes who, who need something that's easy on the stomach when they're consuming it over several hours. Um, just a couple more things. Uh, it's, a, it's a completely natural energy source, just non-GMO corn cooked with heat and water. The cooking process is very critical to, to the, making the carbohydrate work how it does, but all it is is corn, heat, and water. Um, like we talked about, it's a food, um, and it's also gluten-free, and the carbohydrate, it's non-GMO. So we've got a, um, a few uh, different questions, but, um, which we're going to get to right after this slide, but we just want to talk about the two versions of UCAN and, and how you would go about using them. So there's and, and there's actually a third version, which is the plain you can, which those of you who ordered the natural sampler pack would have received. But um, let's just focus on the sports drink mix and the protein enhanced drink mix to start with. So all the packets have 30 grams of our super starch carbohydrate. So everything contains super starch, which is the key ingredient. You're going to get energy from all of the you can products. Um, they all have electrolytes as well, uh, sodium and potassium. Um, you know, a good amount, pretty much equivalent to any other sports nutrition product on the market. So you are going to get, um, you know, sufficient electrolytes from UCAN for, um, you know, if you're doing uh, relatively, uh, you know, exercise of two hours or less. We'll, we'll talk about there's a couple questions on um, supplementing with additional electrolytes for, for longer events, which we'll definitely get into. But you're getting super starch and electrolytes from everything. So with the sports drink mix, um, you know, the way to use it is as a pre-workout snack. So the reason we say pre-workout snack is that you can, it's not something you want to sip on slowly throughout exercise, like a hydration drink or like a typical sports drink. It's, it's really something that you're consuming 20 to 30 minutes before your workout instead of that bagel, instead of that banana, instead of that energy bar. And um, it's, it's going to break down very slowly and maintain your energy throughout that exercise, but you want to drink it all before your workout. Um, outside of the workout, you could certainly use it in the middle of the day instead of, you know, coffee or iced tea just to help you maintain a steady level of energy, um, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon when you hit that slump. And then you could also add it um, as the carbohydrate portion of a meal replacement shake. So a lot of people like to mix their sports drink mix with some protein powder. Um, they may mix it with you know, Greek yogurt, it's a small handful of berries and blend it with ice, um, works really well as the carbohydrate portion of a, of a healthy smoothie. The protein enhanced you can, um, like we mentioned, it's got the electrolytes and the super starch and also has 13 grams of added protein. So um, from an energy standpoint, it's going to be relatively similar whether you use the you can with protein or, or without. Um, because it has the super starch, you could definitely use the you can with protein pre-workout as well. The benefit of the protein free workout is to help curb hunger in the stomach. So when you have stable blood sugar, you don't feel that that mental feeling of hunger that you feel when when your blood sugar drops. But um, that physical feeling of hunger, the hunger you feel in your stomach, that's that's the benefit of adding protein. So if, if you're working out in the morning and don't really like to eat and want to treat this as your breakfast, protein you can works really well in that situation. If you're working out at 6 p.m. and you haven't eaten lunch, you ate lunch at maybe noon. You know, several hours ago, protein you can also works great in that situation. Um, also works very well for recovery post workout. The benefit of you can um, say compared to something like chocolate milk is, um, you know, with with both you have the protein, so both are going to help repair, re, excuse me, rebuild and repair the muscles. Um, but with chocolate milk with twenty to twenty five grams of sugar, you're really losing the opportunity to burn fat post workout, which is which is such a great time to continue burning fat. When you're using the super starch as your carb source post workout and and pairing it with protein, you're keeping your blood sugar stable and you're really putting yourself in that ideal state to continue fat burn after a workout. So it works really well there. Um, again, you could use it midday as a healthy snack and and also works. Um, you know, very well uh, as uh, a meal replacement shake. So a lot of folks like to do some almond milk, some nut butter, you can with protein, and maybe a small portion of a banana and, and have that as a breakfast shake or, or even have it as a as a dessert shake. So works really well um, in, in those regards. And we're also going to get into to utilizing you can during the workout here as we answer a few questions. But um, just in terms of mixing you can, we found uh, in terms of taste, it works best if you mix a packet with about 8 to 12 ounces of cold water. You want to give it a nice hard shake. 
it's a starch, so it's not going to dissolve in water. So you just want to make sure you you shake it up really well. And and you know, like any powder, it's going to taste best when you use cold water. Um, the amount of water is, is truly doesn't have any bearing on how the product works. So you know, some people mix it up into a paste if they just want to get it down. Some people like to have it more diluted, but generally, we recommend about eight to twelve ounces. So. Let's get into uh, let's get into a few questions. Robert, uh, we'll start with Robert, who says, uh, "Did an easy twenty mile run, uh, ten minute miles, had you can with protein before the run? Uh, very good, Robert. So you've already kind of figured that out on your own. Uh, mixed two packets. Um, he mixed the blueberry and the lemon in thirty six ounces of water, and he drank uh, between forty five minutes and two and a half hours. So." Um, sounds like you were sipping on it and you can correct me if I'm wrong Robert we'll actually talk about um that here in a second he said um he had some pretty good cramps in my calves within 10 minutes of finishing the run do i need more electrolytes in addition to what's in your mix so Seth i'll let you take that one um address both uh Robert's electrolyte um question as well as um you know how you would recommend using you can during a workout so you know, in terms of cramps, you know, it's just so individual depending on the weather, depending on your training state. Um, but each packet of UCAN, you know, has around 240 milligrams of sodium, 140 milligrams of potassium on average. And the, um, the, uh, the, if you use our tubs, if you purchase them, it's just a slightly smaller serving size. But the point is there's, there's adequate, you know, um, electrolytes in, in UCAN. You know, um, in terms of training, in, if someone is prone to cramping or these additional electrolytes, you know, the average recommendation is around 500 milligrams per hour. So, if you, of sodium especially, so if you are prone to, to cramping, you can always add, you know, um, in, in your water, you know, an extra sugar-free electrolyte tablet, like a noon tablet or something like that. Um, using using you can, you know, you, what you want to do is, you know, a general recommendation is, you know, one packet you consume completely, you know, around 20 or 30 minutes before. You know, anywhere between an hour to um, hour and a half on average, especially starting out, is, is how long it lasts. We do have a lot of people who are where it lasts two hours, but just to meet people in the middle, a packet usually lasts an hour, an hour and a half. Um, and and then for exercise, really, you know, over that hour and a half, we simply recommend, you know, a, you know, a packet or or a scoop if you use our tubs. You know, roughly every usually every 60 to 60 minutes if you're new to UCAN and as you use it more. You know, you teach your body to better burn fat, so you can go longer intervals with, with, with you can. So you might have a serving every 90 minutes, maybe after a couple of weeks or a month of using you can. Um, people put, you know, for, 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 for longer workouts, you can take a 10-ounce uh, a flask, put two servings in it, so you have five ounces of water per, per packet. It's a little concentrated, but as Varin alluded to earlier, you can is really your fuel source, not your hydration. So, um, and the, the main reason you want to have it it's not like you need to have it exactly all at once within a one-minute period, but you want to consume a serving within at least 10 or 15 minutes. I know it's sometimes tough to down five ounces at once, so you can have a little bit, you know, over 10 or 15 minutes, at least you get that serving in. But that's because you want it all in your intestines, you know, getting digested so it's dripping into your body. The whole point of UCAN is that you don't need to sip on your, your, your fuel source, that you can, you can have it and not worry about your nutrition for the next hour, hour and a half, and just focus on your performance. And for hydration, you can sip on um, water, or if it's you know you know exercise over two hours, you can add additional electrolytes. But that's really um, personalized, depending on you know if you're in Texas or in New York. You know, if Texas you might need some more sodium because it's hotter, but New York in this time period, time of year, you might not need as much. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that answered that question. Um, but uh, let's uh, we we got a question from Justin and George, which are uh, relatively similar. So Justin asks um, for events three plus hours in length. How do you recommend using you can on the run or bike? I'm a believer in the product, but still how uh, unsure how to use it on course. And uh, George, along that same line, says how exactly should you use you can in an event over ninety minutes? So. Um, you know, Seth, you addressed a lot of this. Um, I'll just uh, give my own spin on it. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, by the end of that, Justin and George, will, um, their questions will be answered. And I'm sure this is something that a lot of other folks are wondering. So, you know, for anything under two hours, we generally found that taking a packet of UCAN um, 30 minutes before the exercise 
is going to maintain your energy levels for that period of time. And, and like Seth mentioned, a packet of you can is a scoop and a half from a tub if you want to make that conversion. So when you're getting into your longer events, your, your Olympic distance try, your half Ironmans, your Ironmans, um, there, as you see from the visual on the screen, really um, to, to piggyback on what Seth's just saying, um, it's really figuring out how long a serving of you can last for you and then spacing out your intervals accordingly. So for example, um, if, you're training with UCAN and you find, hey, that one packet is going to give me two hours of steady energy. What you'd want to do for your longer events is consume an additional serving of UCAN every 90 minutes. And the reason I say 90 minutes is because UCAN isn't like a gel. It's not like a sugar drink where it's going to give you that quick hit of energy. It's a slower breakdown. So you need to take an, a little bit in advance of when you actually need it. Um, so that's why it's very important. You know, it's very important to train with it. You want to make sure that you're taking you can a solid, you know, 20 or so minutes before you want it to kick in because it's going to take the carbohydrate a little bit of time to break down. So let's look at, you know, three hour event, for example, what a lot of people do is have the you can 30 minutes prior to the swim, very easy on the stomach. So it really doesn't cause that GI distress during the swim. Then, um, you know, when they get on the bike, um, if it's an Olympic distance try, you know, they might about 30 minutes into the bike, they might have that additional serving of UCAN, that second serving of UCAN, and that's just going to maintain their energy uh, for the rest of the event. And then often on the run, they won't have anything at all. When you're getting into your longer stuff, you know, your half irons, your irons, uh, what a lot of people do is, uh, you know, if they're on the bike for three, four hours, they may concentrate um, three packets of UCAN in their in their bike bottle. They'll have their UCAN in one bottle. They'll have their hydration, whether it's simply just water or a mix of water and electrolytes, in another bottle. And then at at you know whatever interval they figured out, say they feel like they need UCAN every seventy five minutes. At seventy five minute intervals, they'll consume if they have again we said three servings. They'll consume a third of that UCAN bottle. Um, over a relatively short period of time, you know, over a five to 10 minute period of time, get that serving in their system, then just sip on water for the next 75 minutes, and then, you know, repeat it 75 minutes later. And what a lot of people really like to do and, and is when you're on the bike for a triathlon, they like to try to finish that final serving of UCAN as close to the end of the bike as possible. And then that really, um, you know, for a lot of people for at the half iron distance, um, that'll really carry them through the entire run. They may have, you know, a little bit of, of flat Coke or whatever's on the course, um, you know, towards the end, just to give them a little kick if they feel like they need it. And, and a lot of times that may simply just be mental. If you may not actually need it, but um, that's what people really like about using you can for, you know, for half irons or, or, or triathlons of any distance is it really cuts that need to, to take in a lot of gels during the run. For an Ironman distance, what a lot of people do is, you know, maintain that same type of fueling plan on the bike. And then if they want to continue to fuel with UCAN on the run, they'll use a small gel flask, mix a packet with two to four ounces of water, really concentrate it and, and, and give it that paste-like consistency. And then, you know, about uh, an hour and a half into the run, they'll they'll consume their UCAN gel and, and that'll carry them through the second half of the run. So, um you know, as, as you can see this quote um, from from Steve uh, below, uh, actually this gentleman, Steve Johnson, he completed a, a sub four hour Ironman. He was the uh, amateur uh, winner at Ironman Boulder this year in, in Colorado, the 70.3 in Boulder, um, f including his pre-workout serving of UCAN and what he consumed during um, the, the race, less than 450 calories of UCAN for a sub four hour Ironman. So, you know, as you can see, this is really somebody that um, you know, has trained with UCAN consistently and, and is, um, you know, his performance isn't suffering and he's consuming significantly less calories. So that's really what it's going to allow you to do. So Justin and George, hopefully that answered the question. And, um, you know, the important well, take... You, you, make, you make a good point also is that, you, that when you use UCAN during your training, you get great adaptations to carry over to your racing. So it's not like, you know, during your training, you can have, you know, bagels, bananas, cereal, and then and, I, and you say, oh, I got my Ironman coming up. Oh, I'll use UCAN because I want that slower burn. Granted, UCAN will be better at that one time, but if you use it during your training, you can achieve, you know, higher, um, you know, higher outputs. You can get the benefits of burning fat at higher intensities, and, and you can train more often because you're not depleting your body and having highs and lows. You're able to train multiple days per week because your energy is so steady because you're recovering better. 
So, so Seth, hold, hold, that, training tool. hold that thought for one minute because actually uh, it's a perfect uh, segue into uh, you know, it's very similar questions from Justin and Marcelo. So Marcelo says, is you can something that provides a maximum ben benefit immediately? Do I need to change my diet in order – um, for you can to make it effective and then and you know Justin in, in a similar light says I consider myself a fat adapted athlete ie I can use both fat and carbs for energy Does you can benefit fat burners more than carb burners Do you already have to be fat adapted to take advantage so you know you were going down that line but um, you know in general what would be your take on um, you know the difference uh, with somebody who's eating a lower carb diet and using you can and, and what's your take on that whole idea of an adaptation period so i mean the uh you know when, when someone who's a fat and adapted athlete it, it means that they're you know that that they're have easily accessible able to to burn fat and really have uninterrupted fuel flow all the time so you can't support that because it keeps your blood sugar steady while you're going for long periods of of time and that's that, and you can is great for a fat adapted athlete um we have lots of folks on low carb paleo diets who do crossfit or who, who do endurance training, who, who love that you can keep so low. And it's the main thing, it's finally a carbohydrate that someone who's on a low carb or is a fat adapted athlete can actually use because your body's always going to try to figure out a way to get sugar into your bloodstream, whether you like it or not. You know, and if you're, if you're, if you're not eating carbohydrates, your body's going to start converting your, your dietary protein to, to store, to um, sugar, you know, that's, that's what happens in your liver, your, the protein, when you don't eat carbs, the protein you intake becomes sugar. So you can, can keep your blood sugar steady while you burn fat, and it's especially great as a training tool before your workouts to approach higher intensities where you can achieve maybe an anaerobic threshold because you actually have some carbohydrates in your system. Whereas if you were to just be fasted, you wouldn't be, or you know, just have protein before, you weren't, wouldn't be able to reach those higher intensities. Um, but that said, athletes, there's no specific diet you need to take advantage of you can because you know you can you know we always recommend keeping a diet low in sugar and that's just coming from a dietitian standpoint like myself I can't recommend you know high intake of sugar to for health for whatever reason that's just um, that would be nonsense but the main thing is is that you know we have athletes you know all starting five of the Golden State Warriors use the product you know and you know NBA athletes you know Varn I know you're a sports junkie you know they they, they don't have they have very high carb diets usually and you know we're in around 100 colleges, um, and they're all they're they're all these athletes are on high calorie, high carb diets. Yet they're using UCAN because they're they're training hard and it's keeping their energy steady. But they're using it as a pre-training tool to help them get the metabolic adaptations to take you know take care of themselves during their workouts. So um, so and and those are our athletes. But you know in in general, it's good to just keep sugar low. And, but you know you can be a vegetarian. You can be um, on, on, a, on a moderate carb diet, on a higher carb regimen, depending on your, because everybody's physiology is a little bit different. Um, but in, in general, to, to, to make the best of you can, you, you wouldn't have, you know, a, a bagel and you can together. Usually, you would just have you can before because you wouldn't need the excess carbs because those would cause those highs and lows in energy. So it's, it's more about choosing the right foods and implementing you can surrounding your workout. And, and Marcelo, um, you know, just uh, one final point, uh, you know, if you are somebody that's um, trying to, you know, ha has been used to the traditional way of fueling, has is, is consumed a lot of gels and sugars to fuel the workout, um, really what you would just want to do if you're interested in, in switching over to UCAN is, you know, initially for the first couple workouts, if you're doing like a really long break or a several hour ride, um, you, you may need to just shorten the timing between doses so you know the for for the first couple of sessions you may want to do a packet of you can every hour and then and then you'll find as your body as uh, you know starts to get used to that training adaptation and not relying on and needing the sugars that that hour will turn into 90 minutes and then for for some folks as they train with it longer and longer they just find that a packet's lasting them longer as as uh, you know as they get more used to it so you know, in general, I mean, I mean, you know, nutrition, of course, is always unique to the individual. But but in general, we're finding that even folks who are on, uh, you know, who are used to fueling with gels, they're still not, even if they need to shorten the dosage, uh, the timing between doses of you can, it's still lasting them longer than than a gel would, you know, it's simply that they may not be getting the, the full uh, benefit and the full potential of the product, but but they're finding that it's still, you know, it's still 
a healthier fuel source, it's still easier on their stomach and it's still giving them more extended energy than they'd get out of that, that hit of sugar. So um, that would be the key is just shortening the timing of the dosages or some folks, um, you know, will increase the quantity. So they may take, um, you know, they may take two scoops, you know, every 90 minutes and, or, or, you know, two and a half scoops every 90 minutes. And then over time, the quantity that they need to take um, will be shortened. So hopefully that answered your question. Uh, Bill wants to know, uh, during your last session, you mentioned adding a low sugar bar for additional fuel source. Can you give me some brand names? Um, so Bill, uh, you know, we've had some folks use the uh, the bonk breaker bars in conjunction with UCAN. Those seem to work uh, pretty well, especially at people, um, a lot of people won't eat the entire bar at once. You know, they'll cut it up into little pieces and kind of uh, munch on it every now and then. So that seems to be a brand that that some folks have used in conjunction with UCAN. Um, this isn't a bar, but we have people using the Justin's almond butter packets. Uh, there's a brand called Pocket Fuel that that has like squeezable, uh, squeezable nut butter type uh, concoction in there. So um, those are a, a few of the brands that come to mind that that we've had people tell us work well with UCAN. But but in general, when you're thinking of of having something else, mixing something else in conjunction with UCAN, um, you know it's it's generally good if it's uh, you know a source of protein or a source of fat because. You can't really take care of your energy needs. Now, over a longer distance, you may start to feel hunger. And, you know, the benefit of, of introducing some protein or fat would really be to curb the hunger. Um, so, you know, a lot of times what, what happens with folks when they're on that blood sugar roller coaster is when blood sugar drops and they start to feel hungry, they say, let me take a gel. Because, and, and honestly, in a lot of cases, you're not even doing it for energy. You're doing it simply because you're hungry and you feel like um, the gel will help you with that hunger. But um, it, that's really, you know, it's, it's just gonna have you keep on riding that, that blood sugar roller coaster. So if hunger is an issue, protein and fat are good things to, uh, to supplement you can with. And, and, you know, if, if you're somebody that likes to get your calories, um, strictly in the form of liquid for a long endurance event, a lot of people will use, you know, we talked about using the protein you can pre-workout. A lot of people will also use it on the bike. They'll use it, uh, during their workout as well to, um, help curb their hunger um, during exercise. So you can certainly do that as well. Um, we've got um, several more questions, which we're going to get to. I just wanted to, uh, we're, we're at about the hour mark. So I just wanted to let you all know that as a uh, thank you for joining us um, on tonight's webinar, we are offering a 15% um, online discount to the UCAN store. Um, that's going to be available uh, through the end of the week. And the code is you can try for 15% off. Um, that is eligible on our packets. It's eligible on our tubs. You may see a note at our online store that uh, discount codes aren't eligible on tubs, but uh, this discount code will override that message. So I'm going to post it in the chat. It's uh, you can try for 15% off, and I'll also post the URL to our store, generationyoucan.com slash store. So if you've had a chance to try the sampler pack or if you've learned something today and feel like you want to continue training with you can uh, throughout this race season, then uh, now would be a good time to take advantage of that. Um, let's see. Uh, Holly says, um, it's my set. This one's going to be for you. She says, it's my understanding that post-workout you should have higher glycemic and protein. Uh, I think she means higher glycemic carbohydrate. So when we say higher glycemic, just so I, um, for people who are unclear, it means your, your fast acting carbohydrates, like your sugars, I'm um, in protein for glycogen replenishment of muscles, decreased catabolic breakdown, et cetera. What are your thoughts on this? Seth, go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, the, 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 whole, the whole reason why you need to replenish your stores and your carbohydrates is because you're burning through so many of them. So you can't really change the paradigm of how you feel your body before and how you feel your body afterward. Um, so the reason we recommend you can after the workout is because it keeps your blood sugar steady. You will slowly replenish your glycogen, but unless you're working out two hours later, there's no need to completely replenish your glycogen. So the caveat to this is if someone's going to train twice in a day, you know, you might, you know, you might add some, um, some fruit or at least a healthier form of carbohydrate that you can if you're going to, you know, do a, another workout, you know, an hour or two later. Um, but, but granted, a lot of our college athletes, a lot of our Ironman athletes and our marathoners, they use you can post workout to keep their blood sugar steady. The added protein in there will be used to rebuild, you know, your protein stores. Um, and a lot of the research does show that uh, 
maximize recovery and protein synthesis, meaning rebuilding the muscle and preventing that metabolism, which is muscle breakdown, it's really adequate protein that's needed after workouts, not necessarily. So, so we're providing. You know, high and low, high glycemic or the fast acting carbs, and the protein's there to to keep you steady. Now, if you're someone who's, you know, more concerned about, more, you know, you could always add some fruit to the shake and at least get some extra calories. But the U can will keep your blood sugar steady and avoid any any spike and crash effect that would occur from, let's say, you know, having juice or something like that. So you can always add some whole fruit. But if your goal is body composition, you know, you, you would want to just have U can afterward because it does give you the carbs and the protein. It keeps your blood sugar steady, but it keeps your body um, continuing to burn fat, which is huge, especially for those that want to lean down uh, from their training as well. So that's when we see the best body composition effects is using UCAN before and then UCAN with protein afterward. And I, the main reason is that, you know, when you're working out, you have tons of, you're, you're breaking down a lot of fat and you get this great fat burning effect. But if you take in, let's just say, a recovery drink that might be, you know, Accelerate or Endorox or some of the Hammer products where there's the maltodextrin carbohydrate, it's going to spike your blood sugar and the body post-workout is going to say, hey, I got all this sugar in my blood. All that fat burning effect that I had going on during the workout, um, let's have those fat, fatty acids in my bloodstream recirculate back to my, my fat cell and start storing them. So you really don't, um, you don't necessarily need high blood sugar after workout to promote recovery. But if you want more calories, you can you combine you can with some fruit and, uh, and added protein. And that's, the, uh, that's, that's our answer. And, you know, so we, we touched on the fact that um, there's a lot of endurance athletes that out there that have told us they've actually gained a few pounds during training, which um, comes as a surprise to them because for, you know, for a lot of people, especially a beginner triathletes or, or marathoners getting into the sport, um, training for one of these races represents the most that they've, um, you know, the hardest training that they've been through um, in, in some time or, or even in their lives. And a lot of that weight gain is, is you know, some of it's due to what they're consuming during a workout, but some of it's due to that, that emphasis on, you know, that big pasta meal or, or, you know, a bunch of carbs post-workout. So Seth, I think just went into that in detail. And, and the final point, Holly, Seth, you, you, you alluded to this in the beginning, but just to be a little bit more explicit on this, um, with, Sorry, what's Holly's last name? Uh, what is Holly's last name? I don't know. I don't, I don't see her over here. Do I, do you, do you know Holly, Seth? It's uh Holly... H A Holly Hamer. I'm completely butchered that, but um, oh, um, I think I spoke to her on the phone today, actually. Okay. 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 Excellent. Well, so um, you know, definitely appreciate your interest, Holly, and um, you know, I think, uh, I think we'll give her a shout out. She's a she's Queen City coaching, so let's give Holly a shout out. Oh, okay, exactly. She said she did speak to you on the phone today. Yep, a excellent. So, um, you know, Holly, just one more Queen quick City point on that. Coaching in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> there you go. Um, you know, when, when, as we talked about, we alluded to in detail, uh, with you can, when the body's burning more fat and you're not depleting your carbohydrates, there's that, that there isn't that same need to replenish carbohydrates, uh, after the workout, because you just haven't depleted your carbs to the same extent as you would when you're using sugar-based fuel. So that's, that's something that, you know, Bob Sibahar, um, mentions, um, you know, at, at great length is, um, you know, the old method of fueling was, all about um, you know carbohydrates, refeed car carbohydrates, and then after the workout, replenish with carbohydrates. But when you're burning that mix of, of fuels, then you're just not as depleted. Um, let's get to uh, just a few more questions here before we wrap up. Uh, Kim tries and uses the sports drink pre-workout around 35 minutes before. I find I have to go to the bathroom an hour into the workout. Am I using too much water? So, um, so Kim, yeah, you know, with a lot of folks that um, that that have that issue, they just do. Um, minimize the amount of water. Like we, I think we touched on this earlier, but the amount of water you use has no effect on how the product works. So, I mean, I've gotten to the point now where I'll often even just use four ounces of water per packet. And, and yeah, it's a little thick, but, uh, you know, just can get it down quickly. And, um, you know, you, you lose that issue of needing to go to the bathroom. So you can mix it as thick as possible where you can still tolerate the taste. And then, um, you know, then you can just, um, you could certainly just hydrate with water gradually. Uh, throughout your exercise, let's see. Yeah, Barn, I'll give her an idea. The um, yep. if she if she's interested in either our plain you can, she can mix with actually four ounces 
of unsweetened almond milk and a few dashes of cinnamon. A lot of our 5 a.m. runners uh, and people who swim in the morning find has found that, you know, the plain is a little thinner than some of the other flavors. So when you mix the plain with the, uh, a few ounces of unsweetened almond milk and a few dashes of cinnamon, it kind of just is a little easier to take down. Um, and you can use less water. Other folks have used a little bit of lemon juice, uh, maybe an ounce or so, and, and a little bit of water with the plain you can as well. Um, or a scoop of our, uh, or, or a scoop to a scoop and a half of our um, vanilla cream protein flavor. Um, it, it's, it's been very, uh, it's a little thinner, so it's a little easier with less water. Uh, so those are just two ideas, especially, that's what's worked well with our, uh, especially our runners that, and swimmers that don't want to take in a, a, lot, a lot of liquid and, or feel like they have to go to the bathroom an hour into their run. So, um, so that should be something you should try out. So we've got uh, two kind of similar questions from Cheryl and Nancy, and, and these are the uh, these are doing the um, th these are in in regards to a particular breakfast they're eating. But I, but I think I want to throw both these at you at you, Seth, because both of them are probably um, relatively common breakfasts for endurance athletes. So Cheryl says, "I'm a total newbie in the tri world, doing my first seventy point three in June. Um, I'm training well, but I always eat oatmeal with some raisins before my morning training sessions. Do I forget about the oatmeal? Uh, she says she has the sampler pack, but she hasn't tried them yet, was waiting for this webinar. So, um, yeah, what would you say kind of about the, uh, you, you know, first just give an overall perspective on the type of breakfast that would work well with UCAN, and then how about the oatmeal specifically? Would you uh, replace the oatmeal with UCAN? Could you do both? Yeah, so I, I think what she could do is she, she could do two things. You know, the, the, the um, the folks that have breakfast and then kind of then do their training, they, they usually aren't having their breakfast an hour before. Um, so if from a nutritional perspective, she'd probably want to add some protein to that breakfast in general. So the meal before you have UCAN should probably be something that's going to be able to balance your blood sugar a little bit better. So that's where she might have some the oatmeal, but maybe have, you know, a hard-boiled egg on the side or some Greek yogurt, something to just, you know, carb protein helps balance out those carbohydrates. Um, that said, if that if, if if the oatmeal is you know she can always cut her oatmeal portion a little bit, so it's, it's so it's not a you know excess amount of carbs, but it's just like a quarter cup or a small bowl, she could then have you can you know around 20 or 30 minutes before exercise and see if that works. We have I, I will tell her that we've had a lot of people swap out that oatmeal and raisins because they might just have three two, two or three scrambled eggs, but then have you can as their carb portion. And what they're finding is that especially the protein from the eggs helps curb that hunger in the stomach. Um, and then the, the UCAN keeps them steady. And, and really, you know, we've been called fat-burning oatmeal because people have found a much better effect with UCAN than, than oatmeal. But that, that said, you know, oatmeal does provide some curbing hunger in the stomach because of the fiber in it. So, so she, can have, she has two options. She can either switch her breakfast and have some scrambled eggs and UCAN as the carb portion, or she can have a smaller – portion of her of her oatmeal and raisins and then have you can uh, while she's on her way to her workout maybe 20 or 30 minutes before she starts you know let's say she has the oatmeal and raisins at 7 but she's not training till 9 she could have her you can portion at 8 30 or 8 40 before she starts so hopefully that's gives her two options and uh, sometimes it's about personal preference and also just kind of seeing seeing what works that's why we uh, we provided the four sample packets and uh, and you know and then even to toss in a third option, Cheryl, what you what you might also try um, and see if if it satisfies your hunger needs is to just treat the UCAN with protein as your breakfast and and skip the oatmeal altogether. You, you now um, you may find that 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 leaves you a little bit hungry, but but if it doesn't, um, then that could be a great option as well. You know, you get that that slow burning carbohydrate to maintain the energy, and you get protein to help curb the hunger. And um, you know, you yeah. Can, so yeah, so that that is that is a good point, Ron. If she if she if she likes the effects of UCAN, but she needs to help curb her hunger, you know she could always have a, a packet of our chocolate protein enhanced, or have two scoops of our vanilla cream flavor, um, or she could even have you know our lemonade or pomegranate blueberry UCAN, but use use a half a cup of Greek yogurt and, and blend it into a smoothie and have that maybe an hour before just because it's got a little bit more calories and volume from the yogurt. So hopefully this uh, this gives her some uh, options. But Barn, you'll give my email. Um, when we end, so people can um, can give me uh, can shoot me an email. You don't have to give them my cell phone number too, so it's easier. Absolutely, I'll make sure to do that before we sign off. And um, 
And finally, um, so Nancy, um, so I don't know, Nancy's telling us she's having some issues with the sound. I don't know if anybody else is having trouble hearing us, but, uh, you know, if you are, please do let me know via the chat, but, uh, hopefully Nancy, you can hear this. And, and if not, um, certainly email us your, your specific question. We'll, and we'll make sure we answer it. But Nancy says, um, she usually has a poached egg, a piece of low glycemic bread and berries with nuts, um, or just uh, bread with almond butter and berries for breakfast. Then about two hours later goes for a bike ride. Should she take you can before that? Um, she says, it seems like it might be too much. What would you say to that? Oh, yeah, I, I I think she can um she can definitely have have that breakfast and then t if especially if it's two hours later she's got a nice balanced breakfast there with some uh, with the eggs and uh, and uh, a better choice of bread so um so she could definitely have the you can before and I think the the thing to remember is that when you have meals like hers that are balanced you know if you're working out two hours later your blood sugar is going to naturally decline during your workout so at least when you have a shot of you can before and it's and it's really just 100 calories that's going to sustain you during a, during your exercise. You're going to be able to work out at higher intensities, be able to have energy that matches the rate your brain needs fuel. You're going to feel better afterward. It might help also prevent that low feeling you get after a workout. Well, it's like, well, actually, it does prevent that. So, um, so I think it's something to try out. And, you know, if she's feeling full in her stomach, she can always, again, do what I was talking about with our, our plain you can or um, – Using less water because it's just it might be you just have less water with it and it's going to be a lot thinner and um, if she finds that you know she's too full from her breakfast she could always reduce some of the uh, maybe take out you know um, you know make have a smaller breakfast if it's more of a um, bulk in the stomach kind of um, feeling that she's going to be too full kind of thing. Definitely and and just one point Nancy um, you know when you talked about low glycemic, um, it, it's important to note that there's, you know, there's a lot of carbohydrates that may be low glycemic, but not everything that's low glycemic will maintain blood sugar or, or actually nothing. There's nothing that's low glycemic that'll maintain blood sugar as long as you can does. So just because something is low glycemic, and doesn't spike your blood sugar doesn't mean that it'll give you long lasting energy. So that's exactly what Seth was alluding to. You know, if you're having that, that breakfast two hours before and then working out, you'll, you'll still want something that's going to give you a steady release of carbohydrates. So having you can, you know, 30 minutes uh, before the, before the workout, will will actually work very well for you that, that, that breakfast or that meal will help um, eliminate the hunger in your stomach. And then you can, will give you that steady energy. Um, right. And, and Mara, I think it's important that she could try half a packet, you know, that's why we came out with these tubs, you know, for a slightly smaller serving size. So anybody out there who's going to run for half an hour, you know, see, see how you respond to a smaller serving of you can, if you're, you want to cut if you want to even have less of it you know you can we've had people use half a packet that's that's been great for an hour so just kind of um experiment on your own to see what serving is going to work best for you just uh two more questions here before we wrap up seth uh george wants to know if you're doing a shorter workout say 45 minutes should you use half a packet uh, i guess you read george's mind because that's exactly what you just said so absolutely george um for those shorter workouts you could definitely um use a smaller serving size. And that was really the, the purpose of the tubs was to give people a smaller serving size because, you know, you want steady energy even when you're working out for a short period of time. It's not just when you're working out for multiple hours. You know, you always want steady energy when you're working out. So, um, so yeah, that, that was the appeal of the tubs is that people could use less of you can for their shorter workouts. I, I will tell you that some people like to still use that full packet for a shorter workout because if you don't have time to um, you know to get some food in you when you're done with that shorter workout because you have to go to work or whatever it may be or you know if you're working out in the morning and you have a busy day uh, the fact that you can stays with you and it's still gonna maintain your blood sugar um, you know even if you have a full packet and you're only working out for 30 or 45 minutes a lot of people like that effect of stable blood sugar after their workout so you know they can go home take a shower get to work and, and they don't feel depleted or they don't feel that, that ravenous hunger that comes with low blood sugar. But um, yeah, to answer your question, certainly you could use a smaller serving size for shorter workouts. Yeah, uh, you gotta try it on yourself. Use a packet before one time, use half a packet, see, see, see the difference. Uh, the last question we've got uh, before we wrap up, Seth, is from Dwight. Um, and actually, you know, I can, I can take this one as well. Either of us can. Um, he, Dwight's wondering if the protein shake was okay for his 10 year old to take after her run. So yep, Dwight, absolutely. I don't know if you were with us at the beginning, but um, 
when we talked about the origins of UCAN, you know, it was originally created uh, for infants uh, with a very rare blood sugar disease. So it's completely safe for children. No issue there. Um, no issue there at all. And, uh, and you know, it, it is a food product, um, which we also discussed a nutrition facts label. It's not a dietary supplement. So, so absolutely, there's no, no danger at all um, with your 10 year old taking UCAN. Um, so with that, uh, it's, it's uh, really appreciate everybody's questions tonight. Been a, been a really great audience, a lot of fantastic questions. And, um, you know, the biggest thing we're all about, uh, and hopefully this came across today, is we're all about education and, and helping you understand how to make UCAN work for you. You know, it's, a, it's a, not a, it's very different than the other sports nutrition products that are on the market. So we want to make sure that, um, that you have all the, the tools and the knowledge to make it work for you. So this is the one element of the conversation, but um, you know, I'm going to put Seth's email in the chat. It's ucanrd at ucanco.com. Seth's our dietitian, so can definitely help you get your nutrition dialed in. Um, I'm also, my cell phone, 516? Yep. 978? Yep. 1864. All right. So you also see that in the chat. Um, Seth is, uh, knowing Seth, he's a phone guy over an email guy. He'll be happy to answer you both. But, uh, you know, if you got a pretty detail oriented question, um, you can definitely just give him a call and it'll probably be easier to, uh, to, you know, get your question answered in a, in a timely fashion. Um, you'll be getting a follow-up email from me with a recording of this webinar. So all this information will be available to, to listen back to for reference. And there'll be a couple links to some blog posts that'll, that'll help you uh, really understand how to race with you can um, as well. So uh, we really appreciate everybody's um, interest and, and all of the input. One more time, that discount code is you can try for 15% off at um, our online store. You can feel free to use that through the end of the week. Um, so with that, Seth, uh, anything else you got before we, uh, before we get out of here tonight? I just think the main thing is you just got to, you know, give you can time to, to try it out. Um, I think one thing we didn't rec just talk about is that if you are used to the energy from high glycemic carbs, from gels, from sugars, from, from bagels, the whole reason you get, you know, you have a, you have a few packets is you can kind of wing yourself off some of those sugar-based fueling because we're much more of a sustained feeling than that quick, that quick hit of energy. So just give yourself the time to, to get used to you can and um, keep in touch with us. We're huge on just, you know, helping support your, uh, your training experience. So thank you guys. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. We will uh, talk to you again soon.